installing on the beach can be seem to be quite difficult but if you know how it'll be quite simple and uh, if you do follow a few steps it'll make it easy for you really important to have a plan on how your work's going to be in the ground because it needs to be stable at the actual on the exhibition you just don't want it falling over and causing an issue this is a sketch of what i've drew up for my installation for my artwork for this last year um, it shows you all the dimensions, the hole positions and the height of the uh, actual structure itself so that the organisers can get an idea of what we're actually going to be building and how it's going to be installed so there'll be no problems. A lot of the artwork will be installed on the beach. Um, we're assuming that yours is going to be installed on the beach so you will need to have full drive to get onto the beach. Some beaches are softer than others, um, particularly Rockingham Beach can be soft on certain days and hard on other days so if it's soft let your tyres down 10 to 15 psi, you won't get stuck, you'll be fine. When you arrive at the art exhibition, you drive onto the beach to your allocated site, unload all of your equipment and gear, everything you need to install it, you leave your gear there and you drive your car back to the car park and then you come back and install your artwork. Make sure you turn up with the car with all of the gear you need, um, don't just expect someone else that can help you, be prepared make your life simple, you'd be on and off the beach quick as, quick as a flash. If you're installing with the pylon method like I use, you just need basically a, a scissor hole digger, uh, just a standard shovel, a square, square edged one or a round edge one, and a rake. Um, that's just to get the hole, and put the, put the pylon in the ground. If you're talking about the pylons for equipment, you'll need your pylon, depending on the height and width of the, your artwork, as your pylon will have to be the correct size to suit that. You'll need a spanner, nut and bolts to bolt your artwork onto the pylon. So once you've got everything in the ground, you've raked everything up and you've covered over your bolts, you can't see anything, no little trip hazards laying around, it'll look like it's been there all the time and you'll walk away really happy. So these, um, these post mounting systems will, mo will work for most people's artwork. Um, they're a basic system you can use on any type of thing. As long as you've got a flat, stable surface in the ground, your artwork can bolt on at any angle you like, any vertically, horizontally, or whatever you like, so long as you've got the correct amount of posts. Now you start with the post hole digger, which is a scissor type. Goes in the ground together, pick it up, pretty basic. Make the hole probably only about an inch bigger than it actually needs to be, vertically straight down, and uh, get to your water table level, or about three quarters of the height of the actual pole itself and um, then start setting up your pole ready to be put in the ground. So you've got a pole, this pole will suit a certain height and a certain sail area. It's not so much just the height, it's the actual sail area of your project. If it's a really big wide item, lots of wind, you, you'll need a big pole, solid one like this one. If it's a very small narrow thing with low to the ground, you could get away with a, quite a smaller pipe and a lot easier to install as well. Now you start off with a pipe with a flat base, there's a few holes drilled on top, tapped out, ready to put your bolts in. I've made a simple handle system you can put on top and then you just you just get your bolts, screw your bolts in. Everyone knows how to work a spanner I guess and uh, put it down tight. Right, so you've got your bolts, simple as dropping them in. Now this pipe here is just, you can use any old pipe you like, you can use normal mild steel pipe. I got stainless steel because I had some laying around. Just a bit of scraps I get from a place called Decandolo Metals in Bayswater. And that's it. Yeah, so this is the, uh, just span it, spanner it on. And now it's completely one unit that uh, you can actually lower it into the ground. I left the rib on here so I can actually pick it up while it's got the pole in it. I lower it into the ground. And when it gets down to about here, as you saw, as you'll see in the video, is you just turn the handle slowly and it will just shimmy its way down to ground level. And uh, just push in the sides with the sand. Then flatten the top, get rid of this, take this off again. And you'll be ready to install your artwork. The 
and you can get your piece of artwork. Where is my artwork here? And this is your artwork. You can put it on. You can. They don't have to have the same hole pattern. You might want to put different holes somewhere. This plate is large enough to accommodate a different position, a different set of holes. You can use it for multiple sculptures. If one is different to the one you did last year. You can just keep the same post and put a different sculpture up. The actual pipe here, I probably haven't shown you the bottom yet, but underneath it's not blanked off. It's actually completely hollow. So do not blank it off because if you blank it, it'll go down and stop and that's as far as it'll go. It needs to slide over the actual sand and the sand will push up inside it. It creates like a little vacuum system and it gets inside and that's how you can shimmy it down. Don't blank the bottom off. If you're installing aluminium artworks on the beach or near the ocean area, a small block here this is called a zinc anode. It stops the aluminium corroding and creating electrolysis on the beach. We have installed artworks before and on a one week period we've had artworks almost severed through just from electrolysis. So this block stops the corrosion. It's the same things they use on boats, all boats. Every boat that's in the ocean that's aluminium has these all over the boats to stop it corroding. Otherwise they sink within a few weeks. Now another important note, if you don't want your artwork falling over, all boat shops sell them. They dime a dozen. All different sizes, different styles, it's about the smallest you can get. You can make them yourself with a block of zinc, you can cut it up, whatever, smaller, so long as it's on there, your artwork won't fall over. We're just going back a little bit here. With your scissor shovels, you can get these basically from Bunnings, any hardware shops have got them. You can get good ones, you can get cheap ones, it's up to you what you want to spend. This isn't a particularly expensive one because I don't do huge amounts of digging with it. For where I live, we need a bit heavier equipment for what I do, but beach work, this is brilliant. Removing it all is basically the exact reverse of everything we just did. You put your bolts back in again, and uh, the reason there's a long handle on it, because after about a week, these things are gonna set in the ground quite solidly. The water that flows from the water table level below will, will really bite hold of this actual surface. And that's why you have the long handle at the top because you, when it's on the ground you may even need a second person on the other side of you one this way and one and turning it once you break that initial seal you'll just be able to lift and you'll hear the air sucking from here and it will just come out like a big syringe out of the ground so and you'll hear the air pouring out and that's your artwork up gone done you're on the, you're in your car again and you're off again in about 20 minutes So the pipe that I use for, my, for the um, pillars that we have, this is an eight inch pipe, standard pipe. It's a thin wall, it's about four or five millimeters thick, standard gauge, measures about 220 millimeters diameter, and that'll hold up quite a substantial item at a meter deep, and that's about the depth you're gonna need for your artwork. Small, little, small statues in this, a meter deep is probably a bit much, but if that's what they ask for, that's what you've got to supply for them. Uh, yeah, so this is just a little off cut. You can get this materials pre-cut from a place in Decandolo's Metals in Bayswater. You tell them what, so what length you want, they can cut it. As for the top plates, these are just leftover laser cut pieces from Decandolo's. There's a scrap bin there, you can get them for a dollar a kilogram, you can buy any thickness, but generally get it at least six millimeters thick, because if you're gonna put bolts into it, you need something for the actual thread to, to actually bite onto. Eight millimeters thick is better, 10 is even better, but it all depends on what they've got in their bin on the day. They get thrown out once a week or once a month so you only need to buy one anyway because you're making one pylon will last you for years so now you're putting the pylon in the ground and you've dug your hole you've put it down to the ground level and you stand back and go it doesn't look level so you get your old spirit level and you look it up there and you go oh it's not level so you try to push it across, push it over you try and get that best you can before you stick your artwork up because if your artwork needs to be dead vertical, this is gonna change things. Um, if you put it in the ground and realize that it's not so level, there's not the end of the world. You can start using the shims. You can actually get the little shims. You can work out how much it needs to come up. You can get the level, get it up, put your shims under here. That's not quite enough. You get the next size up shim. These shims here can be bought from Bunnings. You can get small ones and that sort of thing. They're only like 20 cents each. 
and that's it there. We've got now got a perfectly level surface in that direction. You do the same, same in the other way, same in that direction. And once again, it's perfectly level with those two shims there. Put your artwork back on again, bolt it up, and you know it's gonna be spot on. But make sure when you build your artwork that your actually base is square too. <laughs> that's another thing, because if it's not, it doesn't matter how much you level this up, if your base isn't square to your shaft, it's not gonna, it's not gonna stand straight up and down. But some people don't want it up and down, they want it on an angle, so you just build it how you wish, but yeah. You can make these pylons perfectly fine yourself. Like I said, you just buy a length of material. You tell, they'll cut it to the length you require. You only pay for what you use. Um, this here is just welded on a few stitch welds around here. I suggest drilling your plate first and putting your bolt holes in, uh, ready to take your statue or artwork or whatever you're doing rather than trying to do it after it's built because trying to get this in a drill press sometimes to actually drill the holes can be difficult. So drill your plate first to suit over your holes, weld it on. If you haven't got the skills to weld it on, you can ask someone that has, or I actually this is what I do sort of like for a living as well, as I build things for people, artwork, structures and installation things. I can do that sort of work for you as well. So don't feel frightened to ask, but there, we can do it for you. These pylons here, uh, the plates be cost you a dollar for the top plates. Drilling, um, I can't really give a quote on drilling at the moment, but it all depends how your structure is going to be. It's not super expensive. The material alone, that would probably be about, about a $60, $70 piece of material. Uh, they may even have offcuts there. You might walk in, there's a piece on the floor which happens all the time. You go into the shop and there's a piece on the floor, it's that much too long. And you go, I'll have that piece there. They charge you scrap value for it. You bring it home, if the castaways ask for a metre long, you cut it to the metre height. You can use a grinder. Cutting this stuff's very easy with a grinder with a one mil cutting wheel. And uh, you'll probably get away with $50, $50 to $60, $70 for a, a piece. Yes, it has to be round, because if you're trying to cut it in the ground with a square post, square things don't like going in a round hole very easy, so you won't better rotate it um, as easy. Well, you could use a square post, but you can't spin it. If you can spin it, twist it and turn it, it will just shimmy its way down sort of thing and it's a lot easier to get in and out again. A high water table, like if you dig into the ground, if you're right on the beach where the water's lapping up, as soon as you dig into the ground, you're gonna start getting into water. Now to get this post a meter in the ground is quite, it's gonna be quite difficult. Um, but there is one option you can do is to actually just grind little V's in here, like little teeth. So you'll actually put it on the bottom, of, on, this is the bottom of the post, and when you're carving in, it will actually carve its own path down into the, into the uh, really wet sand. Then when you're turning it in with your handle, it will actually sawtooth its way through the sand and actually get deeper into the sand. Um, wet sand is the hardest, you can't, because you just can't keep digging, it just wants to keep falling in, falling in, falling in. So there's no point trying to dig a massive big hole because you're never going to get there. You basically just have to shimmy these posts in. You may even have to go, you may even have to do a test install one day. Take one out, you may even need to get a, a smaller post and have two, one there and one there and create a bridge between the two to mount your artwork on. A small six inch one is, is a lot easier to get in than a big eight inch one. So you have to think about it, trial something. Not everything's a given, just trial and error. After you've removed your post, you've got everything out of the ground, and you've got your artwork on your ute and you've done a great job and you've won your prize and that's it's awesome but remember to fill the hole in because we don't want anyone falling down it because there will be a lovely hole that fits a leg perfectly so fill the hole in and rake it over like you were never there good luck with your entry and uh hope to see everything works out for you and i uh, hope you do well and uh maybe i'll see you around there thank you